Prêt pour le défi Back at the stadium here for the big one. We're underway, France versus Italy. And the big crowd has built to what is a semi-final to work out who will play England in the cup final. We've got a free kick early. Trip. We'll go to the Frenchman. Got an early goal there. Sorry, we were looking away as we we're trying to find out who was uh, shooting for that one. The French have uh, got on the scoreboard early with the first goal. They're underway in the perfect start. You wouldn't under a minute dream start for them. Big Gregoire Patak against Nico in the ruck. That should be a great contest. Bolognese kicks long. Big Seabass. Yeah, he's paid the mark. Played on though. Don't think he's heard that. He's out of bounds there. You are well and truly out of bounds, young man. He's standing about two metres out of bounds when he got the ball there. <laughs> and tried to volley. Wrong game, sir. The umpire requests a throw in. The big hoof by the volunteer. Great throw in. Wouldn't guess Nico takes it straight out of the ruck. Bolognese, 22, gets a handball back to Nico. He's a left footy though, he won't like that, and he lets it dribble out. Nico has starred before in European football, winning uh, the best player when he took on the AIS uh, earlier this year in Copenhagen. And Bolognese is some special, that is an over the head kick. These Italians do things differently. Uh, that was from Number 10, Giovanni Alosio, who has also been involved in a number of European games. The ball advances. Le Hotelier, I think it is his free kick, turns out to be the case. He might give the cheeky handball. No, he doesn't. He kicks it. Kicks to centre half forward, leading out strongly. Number 9 drops the mark. Filippo. Straight onto the left foot. Ball evades all. 42 there, the full forward for uh, Italy. Do we have 42? Maybe it's 22. Yeah, it's Seba. Also known as Seba. So play on the French. Hotelier chips over the top. That's a mark. Play on, he says to his mate. Kicks the goal. That's the big number 88. Who we also don't have a number for. Um, well played, sirs. Well played. And France get their second goal in a matter of minutes. The uh, French team look like they've come out to play and they've come out to win in this one. And the umpire takes it in the middle of the ground and he throws it up in the centre. Two ruckmen go at it. And Italia seem to have gotten the uh, clearance. But they handball it backwards. They get it into their forward line now. Frenchman, French defender kicks it out and we'll have a throw up on the boundary line just near the Italian goal. The weather is held up today. It's beautiful and sunny right now. Hopefully it continues like that for the rest of the year here in France. 
and somehow the umpire has picked out an Italian free kick. I can't see his number, so we don't know who he is, but he is going back and he is having a shot at goal. He kicks it up high in the air. And... Oh, and who was that? He got excited. There's a little bit of a push in the back there. But he got he got paid the mark. It's Filippo the Italian. Filippo the Italian. There we go. He took the mark, went back and kicked the goal. Now the Frenchman doing all sorts of gymnastics to get the ball back from underneath the fence. Let's come back into the centre for the umpire to ball it up again. The scores as they stand. Uh, Italy one goal, six points to France, two goals straight, six points. Both teams kicking very accurately to start. Let's hope that can continue throughout the match. France get the clear breakaway. Out to Lotolier. Big number 19. Kicks it straight through the centre for France. As you can hear the crowd cheer. France now three goals, 0 18 to Italy, one goal, 0 6. Yeah, quite the opposite than the game that we just watched, uh, Michael. Uh, these guys are kicking very accurately and making the most of every opportunity. It's, uh, it's almost a forward entry goal um, at the moment. We've, we've just played five minutes, we've had four goals already. The, uh, we've got a centre square infringement. The Italian was running through the square, uh, making it four men inside, and we must start with three each side. Uh, in the square at the ball up. Gregoire Patak the Ruckman goes back. The goal kicker from just before kicks it long. It's about land about 10 metres out. Hotelier contests the mark. Uh, Lucio tries to get rid of it. Hotelier has gone straight back in underneath. He is a real terrier and been quite impressive throughout the day. And they're saying that uh, he's been legged. A free kick for a legging. Shane has paid, and Le Hotelier will go back, steady himself. Very impressive today. And just so composed. What a great start by the French. A good game of football, but four goals straight plays one goal straight. And the French have definitely ignited something here. They're, they're out to a four goal to one lead at the moment, so 18 points ahead. It's very early on in the match. It's just over 13 minutes to go in this first half. And the French seem to have all the run of play. There's a big stacks on in the middle of the ground. The Italians are getting a bit fired up. Played on possibly foolishly. And kicks it into the forward line, goes through for a behind. That's the first behind of the game. Italy get one behind there, so they are one goal, one seven to four goals straight, 24. <coughs> France is winning this one. But Italy have all of a sudden started to pick up. And it appears, it appears as if they've got a bit, they found a bit of a fire in their belly. So hopefully, we can have a nice close match here. The winner, obviously, to take on England in the final. Number nine for France has been spotted up. Pierre Dundele, which we've been calling Dandelion. The big number 60 for France chases. We can't get to it. We'll have a throw up. Just inside the 450, 425, sorry, for the French team been an infringement here the umpire has paid a free kick to the French Ruckman big number 19 also the captain for France Gre Gregoire Patak or Patak and the Italian player the Italian defender has misunderstood the umpire's call and has tried to play on And he is, the umpire has called a 50 metre penalty, which is in fact about a 10 metre penalty, 25 metre penalty in this case. And Patak is lining up right in front. 
and he puts it straight through for France's fifth goal. So France are right out in front in this game. They lead five goals straight, 30 to one goal, one, seven, Italy. Yeah, France shot out to an early lead here, um, and this isn't going to be easy to peg back for the uh, Italians. Nico, the big ruckman, not happy with uh, an umpiring decision for some reason. Maybe it's a language difficulty. I'm sure he'll take it out in this ruck contest. Watch him charge in now. Yeah, big Nico gets the hand to the ball, but straight to a Frenchman. Patak, uh, roving from one of the other guys. Kicks long. I think it's all clear anyway. Uh, that'll be all clear and a goal, uh, no doubt. Um, does he signal the goal? It is indeed a goal to France, another one on the board there. Who have moved to six goals straight. Really quick play out of the middle. Impressive play by Gregoire. The Italians are going to be frustrated with this start and uh, I can't see any way back for them to be honest but we've got 30 minutes of play to go. There's plenty of time, all it takes is a couple of uh, goals, a little, get a little bit of a run on, but the French are all over them, don't you reckon? I do, Ben. The, uh, the French have all the run of play at the moment, the Italians don't seem to have any answers for them. The Italians, right now they have possession and they are going inside their 425. About to kick, and they're going deep into their 425. And there has been... Oh, the Italian player has been hold. No, the uh, the umpire has paid it the way of the Italians. So the Italians will line up for their second goal here. Their first one, obviously, coming in the first few minutes of the game, when France only had one goal as well. So if the Italians can get this one, that will be two goals, one. Still a fair way off the uh, the French team, sitting at six goals straight. And he does go back and kick the goal, and he gets the, tries to get the team fired up. There's not much support here for the for the Italians against the French, as you can imagine being a French home game. But the Italians do get the goal. They are sitting at two goals, one thirteen to the French, six goals straight, thirty six. The umpires are slowly bringing it back to the centre. There is no time on rule here, so the time just continues as we go into. The throw up in the middle of the ground, the two ruckmen will contest. And the Italians get it out there, but straight away tackled by the French. There's a big pile up in the middle there, and the umpire calls ball up. The Italians, you can tell that they want to get this back. Big slap in the middle there, we heard that all the way back here. And the French push it forward, but the wrong way nonetheless. Big dive in by the Italian player. Almost took off his head. Number 22 for Italy. Seba Kroga takes it, kicks it. Big kick into the forward line. It's all French back there and it dribbles through for a behind. So the Italians are on two goals, two. 14 to France, six goals straight, 36. The Italians are picking it back a little bit. But it doesn't seem like they're doing enough to get right back into the game just yet. There's still plenty of time in this match. Just under just under six minutes. Just sorry, just under seven minutes to go in this half. The Italians have the free kick here. And they're looking to push it back into their forward line and attack again to try and bring this margin back. So hopefully at half time it can go in a bit close and they've got a mark. Number 18 there plays on, realises that there is a French player right in front of him, kicks and misses. The pressure got to him. And the Italians are not making the most of their opportunities again. Two goals, three, 15 to France, six goals straight, 36. The 
Frenchman brings the ball back into play, kicking long. Great leap, all three launching off the um, surface there. Nico for the Italians, battling hard with the 88 of France. Uh, he's not, not happy, Nico. It's his free kick. He goes back. He's trying to lift his teammates with uh, some aggression at the football. Slightly misguided. Watch out for the table, Nico. He's gone all the way back. I'm not sure he can kick it this far, but he's definitely going to have a go at it. Big hook. Top of the goal square. Filippo jumps. Didn't quite get the stringy uh, hands wrapped around it. He's been taken out off the ball. That hurts. He's rolling around while the French clear out to their half back line. Ball bouncing around. Very hard to pick it up. The Italian stops and then continues. I'd say the ball's out of play there. Throw it in, he says. We're on uh, the half forward flank for the Italians, making about 30 metres out from goals. Good scoring position. But Le Hotelier picks it up. The Hilton kicks it straight to number two. Great kick. Vautrin here. Turns quickly. Play on quickly, he says. He's got runners everywhere. Le Hotelier follows up. He'll kick long. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. Just waited, waited, waited and said, come to me, I'll hit you. And the 60 provided the lead right at the right moment and just a beautiful delivery. The French maintain their perfect goal kicking record here in this match and streak away to seven goals straight. No, excuse me. That's been given a point. So their record has been ruined. And they now are six goals, one, 37. Nico with the mark on their back flank. Nico kicks it quickly to number 10, Fitzley, who plays on, tries to get around, gets tackled, but breaks it. Passes it off to number 38, who gets a goal. Who was that? Number 38. 28. Number 28, my apologies. Bernasconi. Bernasconi for Italy. Gets a goal, a well needed goal back for Italy. They now trail France. Three goals, 3 21 to France, six goals, 1 37. And in the last 10 minutes or so, Italy has had all the run of play. Could they stage a big, big comeback here and win the game? Currently, we have just over three minutes left. The umpire throws the ball up in the center and they're throwing their bodies on the ball, the Italians but the umpire has called a free kick going the way of France. <laughs> the, uh, the Italian player goes to shake the hand of the French player and say sorry, and the ball has bounced off his head <laughs> as he has done that. The Italian player dives in and unfortunately misses it, and the French make him pay. Number 60 again gets another goal, and the French go... Oh, sorry, my apologies. Number two, Alexandre Vautrin gets the French's, the French team's seventh goal. They go seven goal one, seven goals one, 43 to three, three, 21. Goes out of the center again. Italy get the kick forward, but France are all over them. The big Frenchman Patak throws the smaller Italian to the ground. I'm having a ball up here, right in the middle of the ground. Ride this one home with two to go. Nico tries to break loose. He's spun, he's spun. He says, hang on a second. I think it's my free kick. Shane says, no, it's not. It's my ball up. does tend to go against you when you try and turn on the umpires, there's no doubt about that and Gregoire has taken that free kick, great delivery. Vautrin, the goal kicker, the last goal kicker for France, he's too far out to score, he'll kick it to about 20 metres out, 60 and the Italian having a tussle here, the Italian dives on the ball, You've got to be careful when you do that and the ball's held to him and we'll see another ball up with a minute to go here in the first half. Gregoire rocks by himself, out to Alban, tries the banana, not quite. With the tackle, 
The Italian picks up Bognese, gets a handball, ball just trickles out again. There's a little bit of feeling in this match. Um, these two countries have history, long, 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 long history, well before Australian rules football was invented. And uh, we don't like to see that spill out onto the field, but sometimes the history of nations in Europe uh, does get the boys excited during football. Nico with a great tap to Bagnesi, clearing kick by the Italians. Uh, and again, just time after time, the French are mopping up at half back. Switch of play, that's very, uh, very well played to Mendoza. Mendoza kicks wide. The French are just uh, holding the ball so well here. Number 24 uh, kicks long to centre forward. Who can mark it? It's a good contest. Greg has taken the ball again. Gregoire. Out to Loic uh, after the siren that kick, well spotted by the umpire. And it's half time here at the Saint Menard Angels Field. We have the French leading 43 to 21. We'll be back after the break. And we're about to get underway here in the second half of the Axios 2013 Euro Cup. France versus Italy here. And remember, you can always tweet us at AFL underscore Europe. That is at AFL underscore Europe. The French here are holding the lead 43 to 21. The umpire is about to ball it up. And he blows his whistle and we are underway. Umpire balls it up. French get the tap out. Straight down to number 27. He kicks it inside the 50 and a strong mark taken there. Can't quite see the number. The French full forward. 
think it's a higher number. Will he go back and kick the goal? Goes back, stabs at it, and puts it straight through the middle. France take a bigger lead. 21 to 49 at the moment. The umpires slowly get it back to the centre. It's a very exciting game here. Marred by the fact that the French are leading by so much. There is a lot of physicality in this game. A lot of respect between these two, two countries as well. It's good to see the sportsmanship out there. The ball gets thrown up in the centre. Knocked towards the Italian goal. But the French defence mop it up. And we have a boundary throw in. About 40 metres out from the Italian goal. Obviously the quarters, the halves are extended here for the uh, for the finals. And the umpire has ruled an Italian free kick. He has ruled that he was out of bounds deliberately. He's given the free kick to the Italian player who will now kick it into the forward. 425 right into the goal square and a big mark has been taken by, looks like, Nico. And he runs in, left foot, puts it right through the middle. Italy want to move the ball on fast, obviously. They get a goal back. There's now Italy 27, France 49. Italy has their fourth goal. France is sitting on eight goals at the moment, so they've almost doubled their score. The French are the favourites here. Obviously, being at their home ground, Although the Italians did probably come into the tournament as the favourites. The French form obviously knocking off the Irish team, the defending champions, was uh, what clinched their favouritism. The ball's in dispute now. Oh, Tellier goes in for it. The Italian player with the, uh, the black coloured skins on runs after it. He must be cold has warmed up here quite a bit. It's around about 23 degrees at the moment. The ball's in dispute. The minute Patak's in there. And the umpire says, I'll have it. It's a ball up. Of course, head over to the AFL Europe Facebook page as well. We can get all the updates from the day. Obviously, the French and Italian game happening here. The English game happened earlier. England versus Croatia. England came out on top of that by one single goal. Croatia not being able to take their opportunities, having 14 scoring shots, the English 10 scoring shots. Currently here, the French have a free kick. Not a lot happening. Slowly going along, a goal apiece so far in this half. The Frenchman says, give me something. He calls out to his teammates. Big part of the football here is to lead for your teammates. Kicks it into the forward line and the Italians mop it up. Risky kick across goal for the Italians. And the French man has gone down after an Italian elbow to the stomach. The umpire has reversed. Reversed the kick and the, and the Frenchman now has the free kick. The Italian says sorry, but the Frenchman has the free kick. And he will now line up the goal on a small angle. Extends his hand out. <laughs> a comedy of errors there. The French player extended his hand out to the Italian. The Italian did not realize. The French man backed up a little bit. Then the Italian realized. Extended his hand out, but the French man was already backed up too far. He goes back and goes bang. Rubs it in the Italian's faces. Gets a a ninth goal for the French team. The French now lead 55 to 27 here at the Axios 2013 Euro Cup. Obviously the atmosphere here is electric with the French crowd, the home crowd, right behind their team here. 
The ball's in dispute in the middle. The Italians are trying to push it forward, but the French tapping it along back into their forward line. Italian player picks it up. I think that was Nico. Kicks it to number 16 for France. Louis Besnard. Again, my pronunciation as an Australian is not great of French or Italian names or any European names for that matter, so please don't mind if I get their names wrong. Nico takes the ball, strong mark in the middle of the ground. He's looking for his options. Left foot again, spots up brilliantly. Number 10 plays on. Oh, got everyone excited, but he's missed the goal. Sometimes the best option is to take the ball back and get the guaranteed goal. So it, Italy go to four goals, three. And they, in the, in the meantime, they have since got another point. Four goals, five, my apology. Four goals, five. 30 to 9 goals, 155. Now the Italian player is down in the middle of the field. As the French make an interchange, French kicking it out of defense at the moment. Number 27 for them. Gets it in there, but there's been a collision in the forward line. The Italian players come out second best. Number seven, Nico again. Takes it on the right this time. Drills it into the center, but it's all French. Number 71 for France. Emilian Martinez takes it. There's been another collision. Number nine for France. Pierre Dondelet, which we have been calling Dandelion for the day. He's coming off second best here, and he is hurt. He's taking a few deep breaths. His teammates go over to console him, and an injured Italian comes off the ground as well. There's just a lot of sore blokes out there at the moment. Sore men, I should say. Blokes being an Australian expression. Number 39, Lotelier lines up and picks the goal for France. And France go further ahead. Now 10 goals, 1, 61 to the Italians. 4 goals, 5, 29. My apologies. I did get the scores wrong before. I said it was 4 goals, 5, 30. But obviously 4 goals, 5 is 29. So again, remember to follow the Twitter page, AFL underscore Europe. Sorry, that is at AFL underscore Europe. Check all the tweets being updated during the day. Get all the scores there. The Ruckman go up and contest the ball, comes down. No winner there, but the Italians get it forward. And the umpire calls a free kick going the way of the French. We have just over 11 minutes left in this game. And it seems like a bit of a stretch for the Italians to come back from here. They have 32 points down. The French having more than doubled their score. Number one for Italy trying to sneak in and get the shepherd. It's big up around the kick. And it, this is an interesting one. It has hit the rugby post that joins the two goal posts. But that is counted as a goal, of course. And Italy get their fifth goal. So at the moment, the scores read as 5 goals, 5.35 Italy to France, 10 goals, 1.61. It's definitely heated up here. You can hear a lot of things being yelled out in Italian and French that I don't understand. But I'm sure there are instructions to go in hard, keep running, play it tough, go for the ball, look after your players and play fair as the French drive it out of the Italian forward line. Of course the big number, big number 18 for France, big number 19, sorry, Patak. They're also their captain. 
gets the free kick here. The umpire says player, the, the Italian player was holding him without the ball. Attack drives it into the forward 50 and it's a good mark by number 27, Jerome Zener, who takes it back and will line up the goal about 10 metres out on a very, very slight angle. No, the umpire has called him back and he is almost directly in front. He will not and does not miss this. Puts the goal through for France, their 11th. And France take a very handy lead. They now lead 11 goals, 1, 66. My apologies, 11 goals, 1, 67 to Italy. 5 goals, 5, 35. I cannot see Italy getting back from here with just over eight and a half minutes left in this game. Again, another reminder, follow the AFL Europe on Twitter at AFL underscore Europe. Keep you updated on all the posts and everything that's going on around the grounds here. There are different games going on. There's the uh, game going on at the moment for the runners up plate. A few angry players out there starting a, a bit of a tussle, but the Italian Nico runs through, busts through everyone. It gets called. No, it's an Italian free kick about 30 metres out, directly in front of goal. Number one for Italy. Jacopo Carbon Carboncini kicks a point. Italy don't need any more points at the moment. They just need goals. One point obviously translates as one score on the scoreboard. So Italy now five goals, six, 36 to France. 11 goals, one, 67. And again, it's in the Italian forward line and there's a bit of a tussle in there. Every player is going in as if it's their last game because it could be their last game of this 2013 Euro Cup. The French come out with a free kick and they will clear it out of the Italian forward line. Big left foot, drives it into the centre of the ground but the Italians take it out and again off the side of the boot, off the side of the boot with their footballers, we call it in Australia soccer skills. The French kick it out, clear it out again and the Italians very skillful there with the hands this time. Handball it over the top of the Frenchman but French clean it up out of the back line and kick it back into the centre of the ground where number 27 for France gets it and is going to kick it in, torps it in but it's off target and goes through for a point. French crowd are pretty much cheering every kick here as the French go further in, the, in, further in front. They now lead 11 goals, 268 to the Italians. Five goals, six, 36. Oh, the French fumble it here in their forward line. Number 60, big number 60 for France, kicks it, but it's out of bounds on the full. And it'll be an Italian free kick right next to the point post for the French. So no score there, obviously. If it hits the behind post, the point post, then that is deemed out of bounds on the full as well. And the opposing team will get a free kick little clearing up of one rule there for you and the Italians move it forward number 15 for Italy drives it and gets the goal that's exactly what Italy needs at the moment they go six goals six 42 to France 11 goals to 68 still probably just out of Italy's reach with a 26 point lead to the French with just over five minutes remaining in this game as Ben rejoins us for the last five minutes of the game. Ben, any update on what's happening around the grounds? Yes, we've got uh, some results in. The Crusaders won quite convincingly against the Catalonians, so they're through to the final of the plate division. Um, also, Finland uh, convincingly beat Iceland as well, so they're through to the final of the bowl division. Just waiting on results of Norway, Austria, 
and uh, Ireland and Spain, although Ireland look like they're comfortably winning from our vantage point over here. Um, so all looking well. After this match we've got the exciting addition of the women's game. The French national team making their debut in international football. They're all fired up and I've got to say they look fantastic in their uh, jumpers. I'm not sure if they're going with the same monkey air as the men's team, the Lecoqs. Um, but they've got a pink rooster plastered on the front of their jumper which looks quite uh, fantastic. We've got a kick for goal from the French and a miss to the left. Looks like it's going to be a comfortable win here for the French. Um, they're up by 25 now uh, with three and a half minutes to go. So likely to run out victors and become the um, the opponent for the English team who are, who are watching uh, carefully. Nico takes a mark on halfback, pumps the ball long. There's a contest that's in our forward. The young fella, the little fella, the quick little rabbit, Robert, is after it. Chasing still after about 30 metres of running. Couldn't quite pick it up. Bolognese picks it up. He says, I'm cleaner than that. Go bang, kick long. Into the goal square, 28 just begging for it. Kick it to him. Yes. Great grab. That's what he said. He said, kick it to me, I'll mark it. And I'll go back and have a set shot at goal. Takes no time at all. Kicks it higher than he does long. But straight through the middle, that's what counts. We've got a goal to Italy. Maybe they still believe. But it's more than three goals here with less than three minutes to play. We do an equation, maybe a goal a minute um, if everything goes fantastically. But I'll put it beyond them now. And the ball is balled up in the middle again. And the French get the clearance. And that's possibly the ball game with less than two and a half minutes to go. The Italians desperately need all the play here. They're diving on it as if it is their last game, which it potentially will be. Oh, some brilliant football skills, a la soccer skills there, for any of our Australian listeners. And again from the Italians, they seem to be soccering it off the ground a lot. Frenchman, the big French backman, says, you have to go to ground to the Italian man and throws him there, quite aggressively giving away the free kick. Now the Italians are lining up for another goal here. Moves it on quickly, kicks it into the mark. That'll teach him for the future to take his time a little bit more, even though the clock was running down. Now the French have all the run of play and they can comfortably take it out of the Italian forward line and into their own forward line. The Italians have it now. Number 10 for France runs over it. But the game is all but won by the French with just under just over a minute to go in this game. The big French captain drives through. There's a big pile up in the Italian forward line and the umpire will call ball up. There's a lot of players are in there piling on top of each other with the one on the bottom getting up slowly. And I'm sure very very sore. Scores stand at 49 to 68. French captain gets the tap very easily. Kicking in danger there. And the French defender there, number 18. Number 18, who is not listed on our on our team sheets as well, but kicks it out of the back line. And gets it to Latolier. Across the wing. Latolier. Great tackle from him. The Italians get the ball, pick it up, and drive it forward again. But it seems to be, it's two versus one in favor of the French, but the Italian man has come through. He's now it's three on one. Some fancy footwork in there. But it's all wrapped up and the umpire will ball it up about five meters out. And that's time, that's the ball game. And the French win it. As you can hear, the crowd are going crazy. French winner in the end, 11 goals to 68 to Italy, 7 goals, 7, 49.
and we'll come back in a little bit with the grand final here England versus France at the Axios 2013 Euro Cup